Hello and welcome to DigiLink's course Introduction to Python for Linguists. My name is Petra Bago. In this lesson we will give a light introduction to Python, explain some main concepts in programming and give directions from where you can download Python. Since this course is intended for beginners, due to some simplification of concepts, some things may not be precisely defined. We are the opinion that this trade-off is acceptable. As we already said, this course is intended for beginners who have never programmed. However, we assume that you have some basic knowledge of computers, like what is a file, what is a directory, and so on. We also assume that you have basic knowledge of contexts covered in the course Introduction to Text Processing and Analysis. We don't assume you have ever written a line of code. At the end of this course, you will be able to process a text document with Python, write a basic tokenizer, and calculate the frequency distribution of characters or tokens found in a text. These are the very basics covered in this course, Introduction to Python for Linguists. So let's explain what is Python and what are some of its characteristics. Python is a high-level interpreted, object-oriented programming language with a dynamic type checking system. Now let's explain what all this means. A high-level programming language means that the details of the computer are hidden from the programmer. In other words, programmers don't need to know, for example, how the memory is managed on the computer. This process of hiding in computer science and software engineering is called abstraction. It helps hide the complexities of a system so other parts don't have to bother with them. High-level programming languages may also use natural language elements. Basically, a high-level programming language means that we don't have to give instructions to a computer using ones and zeros. An interpreted programming language is a language that executes a program line by line. It does not need to compile the whole program into machine language instructions before running it. When we say that a programming language has a dynamic type checking system, means that errors are found during runtime, that is when the program is executed. Object-oriented programming, or OOP, is programming based on the concept of objects. Later we'll explain some key conce concepts of object-oriented programming and we'll explain what an object is. What are programs? Well, programs are a sequence of instructions that enables a computer to perform a specific task. And what are bugs and debugging? Bugs are programming errors found in our code, while debugging is the process of finding and fix fixing these errors. Errors can be syntactic or semantic errors. Syntactic errors are when a syntax of the code is incorrect. For example, we forget to close a bracket when writing an expression, 1 plus 2. This is not legal in Python. Every open bracket must be closed. On the other hand, semantic errors happen when there are no syntactic errors. That means that the program will not generate an error. But the program does not do what we want it to do. For example, we want it to do addition and it does subtraction. This is a simple semantic error. Let's explain some other basic concepts like data types, variable, functions, objects, and so on. A data type is a classification of data which tells the software how we plan on using the data. For example, data types that we will get to know are integers, floating point numbers, strings, and so on. This means that the data types tells us what operations can be done on the data and also what operations cannot be done on the data. For example, we can't divide one string with another one. We also can't do addition with Boolean values like true or false. To do division or addition, we will need numbers. 
Variables are a storage location on a computer that has a name associated with it and some data in it. Functions are pre-written code that we can reuse later so that we don't have to write it every time we want to use it. Some functions are built in, that is, they come with the program. There are also functions that are publicly available that someone else wrote and that we can use. And also there are functions that we can write ourselves and reuse them. A method is a type of function that is associated with an object. Again, we come across the term object. What is an object? Objects are everything in object-oriented programming. They could be variables, but they could also be functions or methods. They are a particular instance of a class. And what is a class? A class is a kind of prototype of an object. They say what are the characteristics of objects belonging to their class. They define how variables, functions and methods work together and what we can do with them. Simply put, they define the implementation of types. The purpose of the class is to allow us not to start from scratch when defining the relationships between different entities. If we want to run addition on objects that are of numeric data types, we don't have to define that addition is an acceptable operation that can be done on numbers. Let's look at an example of these concepts. Let's imagine dogs. I have a dog named Spam. My dog is a particular instance of a class, that is, it is an object. What breed is my dog defines the data type. A class of dogs are prototypical dogs, blueprints. A class of dogs groups together all dogs and their common features. It is a dog we have in mind when someone else says the word dogs without thinking of a specific dog. My dog Spam can walk and run and bark. These are things that my dog can do. Those are the methods that are associated with the object. Let's now take a look at those concepts, but from the programming perspective. ES equals sign, single quote, text, hello world, single quote. This is a way we associate value, the text, to a variable named S. Print ES period, upper, open round bracket, close round bracket. In these two expressions, S is the object. It is the name of a variable. The data type of this object is a string. It belongs to class of strings, which say what we can do with strings in general, not only with S. Upper is a method. It is defined in the class, and it does something on our variable S. In particular, it returns a string where all the letters are uppercase letters. Now that we've covered some basic concepts, let's take a look at Python. Python was created by Guido van Possum. Its first release was in 1991. It's an open source software, and it is managed by the nonprofit Python Software Foundation and developed by the community. The name Python is not based on reptiles, but on the British comedy group Monty Python. Python scripts are files where Python code is stored and can be executed by the interpreter. The file extension for Python files is .py. Python syntax is elegant and easily readable. Code that belongs together is grouped by indentation. This will be evident when we cover control flow. We don't need to declare variables or arguments. This means that when we want to store some value in a variable, for example, hello world in S, we don't need to say to the program that we plan on using S and we plan on using, using it as a string. Just by assigning a string, the program knows this.
There are different versions of Python. There is a version 2 and a version 3. In this course, we are using version 2.7. The latest version of 2.7 is 14. The third number you should get as high as possible. If you can download 2.7.14, download it. Follow the provided link and the instructions to download and install the version 2.7 for your operating system. Python has one more thing that makes our life easier, and that is the IDLE. IDLE is an integrated development and learning environment where we can start learning to write Python code. The interpreter uses the prompt 3 greater than signs. Input lines start with the prompt or with three periods. Output lines are the lines without these symbols. Comments start with the number sign. Comments are used by programmers to explain code to themselves or other programmers. Comments are ignored by the interpreter, that, that is, it is not executed. Your assignment for this lesson is to install Python version 2.7 on your computer and write your first line of code. Print hello world.